Hey, what's up, guys? When it comes to budget phones, you usually expect some trade offs. In the case of the Realme 3, you get some great performance, but the tall screen is only 720p. So, is it worth looking into? I'm Will for GSM Marina, and this is our full Realme 3 review. Like last year's models, the Realme 3 is built of plastic, except for the Gorilla Glass screen. However, with this glossy finish, the body looks quite convincingly like glass as well. Realme has gone all out with these striking gradient colors. They're really quite gorgeous. The dynamic black model is a bit more subtle, while the radiant blue is shinier. You could even use it as a mirror in a pinch. With a seamless unibody, the Realme 3 feels comfy in the hand, though it is a bit slippery and attracts fingerprints. There is a plastic case included in the box though. Now onto the screen. It's a 6.2 inch IPS LCD with a 19 by 9 aspect ratio and a 720p resolution. Actually the same resolution as the Realme 2. What's new this time around is the smaller water drop style notch cutout for the selfie cam. It's more subtle than a square notch. At 271 ppi, content on this screen isn't the sharpest around. We did notice some blurriness and pixelization here and there, especially around text or the icons on the home screen. However, if you don't mind that, for this budget class, it's sharp enough and quite usable. Blacks are actually quite deep, and colors are mostly accurate, especially if you opt for the warm color mode in settings. However, maximum brightness is below average at 385 nits. Usability out in the sun is still okay, though far from ideal. For audio, the Realme 3 has a single bottom firing speaker next to the micro USB port. Yes, Realme is still going for micro USB here. For a budget device, this speaker is actually pretty decent sounding, with good loudness. If you plug headphones into the 3.5mm jack, it's a bit underwhelming though. Loudness is just average, and there is some distortion creeping into the mix. There is FM radio, but remember that you need to plug in a headset, which doesn't come in the box. You do get expandable storage on the Realme 3, on top of the 32 or 64 gigs built in. The tray combines two SIM slots with one dedicated microSD. The fingerprint scanner is rear mounted, it's lightning fast and accurate, and always ready to unlock the phone. You do get face unlock as an option as well, also quite fast and responsive. The Realme 3 is the first smartphone we've encountered with Oppo's latest Color OS 6 over Android 9 Pie. Unlike previous versions, it brings some UI elements more typical for stock Android. For example, there's now an app drawer to store your apps in, instead of keeping everything on the home screen. But there's still the option to have it like before, too. And the default on-screen navigation keys now take after the Google Pixels, a combination of a back button and a pill for navigation. You can, of course, opt for swipe navigation in the settings as well. On ColorOS 6, the notification shade has a new, more colorful look. Just like before, the phone uses machine learning to freeze apps in the background instead of closing them. You can configure this or just opt out of it entirely. And the game space gives you easy access to your games, and lets you select performance modes for them or block notifications while you play. At the heart of the Realme 3 is a MediaTek Helio P70 in the Indian market and a Helio P60 elsewhere. They both perform about the same though. You also get either 3 or 4 gigs of RAM and a dedicated chip for AI driven tasks, such as the new camera software. In benchmarks, the Realme 3 does a great job in CPU performance, though it doesn't score as high as the Redmi Note 7 Snapdragon 660. We didn't notice any heating or throttling, but where this phone really excels is in graphics performance, thanks to its lower screen resolution. It blows away the competition, nothing even comes close. Battery life is excellent on the Realme 3. With its large battery of around 4200 mAh, it scored an endurance rating of 108 hours in our proprietary tests. Nice! Charging speed isn't too fast though. The included 10 watt charger got us from 0 to just 23% charge in 30 minutes. The Realme 3 has a 13 megapixel main cam with face detection autofocus. It's the same as on the Realme 2, except now there's an f1.8 lens. There's also a secondary 2 megapixel depth sensor. In good light, photos turn out sharp, with decent resolved detail, excellent contrast, balanced noise control, and accurate colors. Dynamic range is about average. There are clipped highlights here and there. A new feature is the chroma boost mode, which you must enable from the viewfinder. It improves the dynamic range through image stacking, and spices up the colors a bit. However, you will lose some fine detail here and there. Portraits come out in 13 megapixels. These are among the better portraits we've seen, flagships included, with nice subject separation and smooth transitions from sharp to defocused. 
When shooting photos at night, the f1.8 lens offers some improvement in detail over last year. Noise levels are high though, and a lot of the highlights are clipped. Turning on HDR will restore some of these highlights, and improve detail a bit as well. We tried some chroma boost shots in low light, and produced some nicely balanced photos. There is a dedicated night mode called Nightscape that aims to improve handheld photo quality in low light. Sadly, we weren't too impressed by it though, often finding that photos from the chroma boost or HDR mode look better. The Realme 3 has a 13 megapixel f2.0 selfie camera with fixed focus. It does a decent job, there's enough detail and sharpness, and the colors are nice. You can also snap selfie portraits, which look fine, and come out in 8 megapixels. For video, you can only shoot in up to 1080p at 30fps, even though the Helio P60 and P70 support 4K recording. There is no electronic stabilization either. However, the 1080p video is pretty decent. It's captured with stereo sound, and there's plenty of resolved detail and accurate colors. Dynamic range is about average, and noise is handled well. So that's the Realme 3. Overall, it delivers a lot more than what you'd expect for the price tag. For something like 10,000 rupees or around 140 bucks, it offers a stunning design, great battery life, and unmatched graphics performance for its class. Plus, some of those nighttime shots definitely don't look like they were taken on a budget phone. However, you do have to deal with this low-res screen. It's not the end of the world, but if you're the type of person that's annoyed if you see something blurry here and there, you might want to look elsewhere. Plus, I have to mention it, it's 2019 guys, we have to move on from the micro USB already. And you do have to find the phone available too. Outside of India, it'll be officially releasing in mostly Asian markets. Otherwise, you'll have to buy it as an import, so keep that in mind. But all that said, if you're a gamer and want to play some heavy titles on a budget, or you're just looking for a ton of bang for your buck, then the Realme 3 definitely deserves our recommendation. Thanks for watching guys, if you're interested in the full test findings of the Realme 3, or want to compare it to some other phones, you're welcome to stop by gsmarina.com, we'll leave a link down in the description below. See ya!